So um, one of the shows that we watch together as a family is a show called World of Dance. And uh, World of Dance, one of the, I think the main judges is Jennifer Lopez, right? J-Lo or Jenny from the Block, right? Uh, she is like, you know, she's kind of like, a, she was a great dancer when, back in the day. She's still a performer. And we were having this conversation about her um, because we saw a movie, um, Second Act, at Redbox yesterday. And... Um, we were like, oh, should we get it? And the, girl, the kids were all like, oh, I didn't know she acted. And we were just kind of talking about that in the car, right? Like she acts, she sings, she dances. So I said, oh, yeah, see, that, that means that she's a triple threat, right? That's what they call it in the music, oh, in, the, in the entertainment business, right? It's, she's a triple threat. And then my daughter says, no, she's a quadruple threat because she's also very pretty. And I said, oh. And, you know, I was preparing this message anyway, so I'm like, okay, perfect opportunity. So I said, so how important do you think, from a scale of 1 to 10, like 1 being not important and 10 being very important, how important do you think it is for a person to be pretty? Automatically off the bat, my youngest says, zero. I was like, okay. And how about you, Maddie? She says, two. And I thought, it's so interesting because when you look at their lives, it's not the truth. Right? Those numbers do not reflect their mindset. Like every day, I'm like, okay, Abby, I'm like literally getting into fights with Abby about what she's going to wear because she wants to wear a pretty dress, right? Like every single day, these are the arguments that I have with her, but she says zero. And I realized, like I remember when they were young, like both of them, independently, when they were toddlers, we would often find them carrying, you know, Sarah's bags over their shoulders and putting on mom's heels and walking around, like somehow having this, like, innate, like, longing for heels and, and bags, right? I'm like, where does this come from? Um, it's interesting, isn't it? So it's interesting for me, most of all, that they would say zero and two. It's interesting because I think that somewhere along the way, they've heard external beauty is not that important, but internally what they were actually feeling was this longing to be beautiful. And I think that there are so many women in our congregation that kind of feel this conflict within them that says, you know, the world tells you that you are more beautiful than what you look like on the outside, but somehow along the way, so somehow along the way we said, yeah, you know what, okay, external beauty is not that important, but they will spend hours getting makeup on, fixing their hair just right, because they know in their hearts somehow they want to be beautiful. See, I think along the way they've found their value or their worth in that thought of how beautiful am I? How attractive am I? There's a story that I found online about a woman who's a photographer. Um, this woman approached her and said, hey, I want to take some, some boudoir pictures. I, I had no idea what that was. It's basically risque pictures for hus between husband and wife, right? Like she wanted to take these pictures. She's been married for a while, and she wanted to take these pictures to kind of spice up their marriage. And so she's, she gives her this instruction. So she, it says, she came to me and looked me straight in the eyes and said, I want you to Photoshop all of my cellulite, all of my angry red stretch marks, all of my fat, and all of my wrinkles. Right? And I'm like, yeah, of course. Like, you know, you're taking beauty shots. And so you're like, make me beautiful. She says, for once, I just want to feel gorgeous. And so... The photographer does exactly what she does, asked her to do and presents her the pictures. And as she gives these pictures to her husband, this is the email that she now returned that came back from her husband. Hi, Victoria. My name is blank. You know, the name is removed. I'm the husband of whoever, and I am writing to you because I recently received an album containing images you took of my wife. I don't want you to think that I am in any way upset with you, but I have some food for thought that I would like to pass on to you. I've been with my wife since we were 18 years old, and we have two beautiful children together. We have many ups and downs over the years, and I think, well, I know that my wife did these pictures for me to spice things up. She sometimes complains that I must not find her attractive, 
and that she wouldn't blame me if I ever found someone younger. When I opened the album that she gave to me, my heart sank. These pictures, while they are beautiful and you are clearly a very talented photographer, they are not my wife. You made every one of her flaws disappear. And while I'm sure this is exactly what she asked you to do, it took away everything that makes up our life. When you took away her stretch marks, you took away the documentation of my children. When you took away her wrinkles, you took away over two decades of our laughter and our worries. When you took away her cellulite, you took away her love of baking and all the goodies we have eaten over the years. I'm not telling you all this to make you feel horrible. You're just doing your job, and I get that. I'm actually writing to thank you. Seeing these images made me realize that I honestly do not tell my wife enough how much I love her and adore her just as she is. She hears it so seldom that she actually thought these photoshopped images are what I wanted and needed her to look like. I have to do better, and for the rest of my days, I'm going to celebrate her in all of her imperfect imperfectness. Thanks for the reminder. I think about what the Word of God says about this very topic. What does it mean to be beautiful when every single one of our women have this inner longing to be called beautiful and thought of as beautiful? What does it mean to be beautiful? It says charm in Proverbs 31, 30. says charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. And he says, look, in everyone's heart, in every woman's heart, there's this desire and this need to be told you are beautiful. But what is the definition that we use to express that beauty? Right? Every woman wants to be felt as though they are loved, but by what would you be loved? We know when we recognize this, you know, Pastor Jay mentioned this last week when, we talk, when he talked about Ephesians. He says the a woman's heart desire is to feel as though she is loved. And a man's heart and his need is to feel as though he is respected. And so God commands us as husbands to love your wives. And women need to feel that, that they are loved. And so they feel that they are most loved when they are beautiful. They feel that they are most loved when they are charming. And so because of that, they feel that they must experience that sort of love. But the truth is, that beauty is fleeting. And that charm is deceptive. And as time progresses, time can be cruel. And what was considered beautiful will get wrinkly. Right, what was considered beautiful will, will now just be a little less so. And so because of the cruelty of that mindset and time, they will think less and less of their beauty and less and less of themselves. It's cruel. That's not what God intended what God intends for women is not to be seen by your outward beauty but that you would be seen and valued and honored for what is happening within but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised and so in first Peter chapter 3 it says your beauty should not come from outward adornment such as elaborate hairstyles and wearing of gold jewelry or fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self. Your beauty should be that of your inner self. Well, what does that mean exactly? He describes it. The unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. He says, true biblical beauty comes from a gentle and quiet spirit. Now, I want you to hear exactly what that means. Because a lot of times, I think men have kind of distorted that and said, yeah, you see, the Bible says you should be gentle and you should be quiet. 
And that's not at all what the Bible is saying. It says that your beauty comes from gentle and quiet spirit. Right? And I think about what that means. That your spirit would be gentle and your spirit would be quiet. It's not silence that he seeks, but it's peace. It's not silence that he's, he's saying that you should have, that you should not speak louder than your husband. No, that's not at all what it's saying. It's not an attitude of subservience even. Rather, it's a, it's a place of peace before the Lord. See, if you think about what it's saying, a woman who fears the Lord should be praised. See, it's a, a person who has fear in their hearts. Now, the word of God tells us in Proverbs that the definition of someone who fears the Lord, it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. And it's talking about having this understanding of who God is and who we are. To rightly view our understanding of God's greatness and to rightly view our own selves. That's what it means to fear the Lord. And it begins to develop and form understanding and wisdom within us. And he says that of women, that you ought to know and understand God and know and understand yourself. That you would no longer be judged by your external beauty, but what's happening within, what's happening in your relationship with the Lord. So that you would have a beauty that is from a gentle and quiet spirit, one of peace. And it says that's of great worth in God's sight. For this is the way the holy women of the past who put their hope in God used to adorn themselves. They put their hope in God. For this is the way that the holy women of the past who put their hope in God, used to adorn themselves. And rather than being so consumed with accessories and brand names, they adorned themselves with hope. They adorned themselves with love for their Father in heaven. What is biblical beauty? What does it mean for a woman to be beautiful in Christ? It means that when difficulty comes, the peace in their hearts calls upon them to put their hope in God. That their worth and their value would not be based on how attractive they are to other men. But the calm in the most tumultuous of seasons, that they might be able to look to the Lord and put their hope in God. They submitted themselves to their own husbands, like Sarah who obeyed Abraham and called him her Lord. This is a tough one to preach. This is one of those ones that I'm like, oh, should I just skip this? I know the women in our congregation will, might have a hard time. It sounds so antiquated. We live in a time where, you know, men and women are considered equals. And of course you are. And of course we are. But we're talking about roles that God has given us as husbands and wives. Although this passage doesn't mention it, we do know that it calls on husbands to love their wives as Christ loves his church and gave himself up for her. So it says, wives, submit to your husbands. It's not an easy thing. Submit to your husbands. And I realize the reason why this is possible is because of the previous verses that their hope is found in the Lord because there is calm and there is peace within their hearts. 
Because there's a gentleness and a quietness in spirit. Because they don't feel the need to compete with their husbands, but rather they can work together as a single unit for the glory of God. That they are not seeking to figure out who is dominating who and who's submitting to, to who, but rather together as a single unit, each one playing and fulfilling their roles. I can pro proclaim these words unapologetically because I believe that Christ calls men to even the more difficult role of lay down your life for your wife. It's not a single act of jumping in front of a bullet or a train. It's not that. But it's about laying down your life daily. Denying yourself daily. Making the willingness to sacrifice yourself and your needs and your wants daily on behalf of your wife, on behalf of your children. We think of the sacrifice of Christ. The sacrifice of Christ was not just merely given to us at the cross where he died, but every single day that he lived, he lived for his people and for his church. That's the call unto his people. And so, wives, submit to your husbands. Like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called him her Lord. That you can have that calm and that peace in your heart because your faith and your hope is in God. That you don't need to prove yourself. But you can be united as a single unit together. Biblical beauty, it means a deliberate submission. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. A deliberate submission. Not because you are weaker. Not because you are unable to rule yourself but because this is the will of the Lord. And God commands it and desires it for you. You are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. Biblical beauty is a fearlessness in women. Biblical beauty is fearlessness. Not because of the confidence that they have in themselves, but because of the confidence that they have in the Lord. What God desires for us is that we would be able to celebrate this call unto his people. That we would love one another the way that God calls us to in this way. That young men... As you're looking for your spouse, it would not just be your eyes that would lead you, but it would be your spirit. That it would not just simply be someone who is beautiful on the outside, but even more importantly, that you would look for a woman who is beautiful in spirit. And young women, as much as you, you know, I know there's, there's so much joy in going to a spa and just, you know, getting facials and beautifying, glamorizing. Work also on your spirit. Work also on your heart. That even more than the time that you spend in front of the mirror, you would spend even more time in the mirror of the word. Right? Even more time being beautiful in spirit. We remember, charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord, she's to be praised. I think about the women of our congregation, 
truly, we are so thankful for you. Because not of the beauty that we see, but because of the beauty that we feel and experience through your lives. That we would be able to celebrate what God is doing in you and celebrate who you are, not just what you look like. Sisters, don't allow the lies of this world to tell you about your self-worth. Each one of you have been made beautiful, not because of what you look like, but because of who you are and who you have been created in the image of. Each one of you are image bearers of God Almighty. And for that reason, you can never be anything less than beautiful. Find your beauty. Find your confidence. Find your fearlessness and your hope in Christ. Let's pray together.